Hello, teachers, parents, and educational leaders, and welcome to this episode of Breaking Down the Best. Now, during this episode, you will get a peek into the members-only area where I have tons of resources to help you make math fun, make it click, and make it stick. There should be a link somewhere around this video where you can learn more. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's get to it and let's break down the standard. Welcome to Breaking Down the Best, a video series dedicated to breaking down Florida's best standards for math. So grab something to write with and maybe even a snack. This looks good. And don't forget to put a smile on your face. There you go. I see you. And let's dive into today's best standard. Hey, hey, everyone. My name is Sarah McCarthy, and I'm super excited that you are joining me as we break down the following standard. Today's standard is MA.5.GR.4.1. This standard says to identify, which in this case means to find the origin and the axis on the coordinate system, in the coordinate system. The origin is located right here and it would be labeled as zero, zero. And when they're talking about axes, they're talking about the X axis and the Y axis and the plural form would be axes. Then it says to plot or place the points and label the ordered pairs in the first quadrant of the coordinate plane. So we're focusing right here on this quadrant, quadrant number one, quadrant two, three, and four are quadrants that they will definitely learn about in middle school and high school. Um, by the way, this document that I'm marking up all over is not something that I created. This is something that the Florida Department of Education releases to the public. And in these episodes, I'm just showing you how I use what they provide to everybody in breaking down the standards. And then we'll spend the second half of this video showing how they connect to the resources available to you in your membership for taking on the best. So we'll get there in a moment. Let's go over some of the benchmark clarifications. So um, this says that instruction includes the connection between a two column table and coordinates on the coordinate plane. So we'll be working with a two column table, which sometimes it's more than two columns, but we'll get there in a second. Clarification number two says that instruction focus focuses, focuses on the connection of the number line to the X or the horizontal axis and also the Y axis, which would be the vertical axis there. Coordinate planes include axes that are scaled by whole numbers and ordered pairs may only contain whole numbers. So no decimals, no fractions, we're just working on whole numbers. Um, I believe in most of the episodes we're scaling it by one, so counting by one, two, three, four, five, but you could also scale it by twos or by fives, tens, whatever makes sense for the situation. All right, so some of the related benchmarks or the horizontal alignment, we've got MA.5.AR.3.2, which includes patterns with inputs and outputs. And in this standard, we are connecting that graphic piece to it. We also have MA.5.DP.1.1, which is where we are collecting and representing data. Some terms that you need to know, the coordinate plane, the first quadrant. You also need to know about the origin, which is the point zero, zero. It's called the origin because we start there when we're plotting points. So whenever we're plotting a point, we'll say starting from the origin, move four units to the right along the X axis. So we're always starting at the origin. The X axis right here is the horizontal movement on the line and the Y axis describes the vertical movement, the up and down on the coordinate plane. So where are they coming from, from other grade levels? Well, in fourth grade, they did practice plotting, ordering and comparing numbers on a number line. So we'll be able to put that into practice here. And then in sixth grade, we've got for this geometric reasoning standard, they will be using rational numbers in all four quadrants. 1.2 is the distance between order pairs, and 1.3 is real involves real-world problems using the coordinate plane. So you can see we're getting the basics 
in fifth grade, but there's so much work to be done. If you remember, there's a lot of work to be done um, using the coordinate plane in the upper grades. The next part is the purpose and instructional strategy section. Let's see what jumped out at me. So it says here we're plotting. We need to be able to plot and label whole number ordered pairs on the coordinate plane. Um, using that two column table, I'll show you an example of that. And the order pairs represented on the coordinate plane. Here I like this that it's kind of describing it, that the coordinate plane can be described as the intersection of two axes, the horizontal number line called the x-axis and the vertical number line called the y-axis. They are perpendicular and they meet or intersect at the origin listed as the ordered pair 0, 0. Whenever we are um, labeling ordered pairs, we're always putting the x-coordinate first and then the y-coordinate. And this represents how far to travel from the origin along the x and y axes. All right, here's the common misconceptions or errors. It says that students can confuse the x and the y values. That's definitely true. Under, they might go up first and then over. For instance, labeling the ordered pair as two, four, but really plotting the point that's four, two. So that's where they tend to get mixed up a little bit. And also that they might not understand what to do when the X or Y coordinate has a value of zero, which they will have some exposure to in taking on the best. Okay. Here's an instructional task. So we've got this point with a three right here. And the question is saying, what does the three tell you to do? So in this case, it would be that it tells you to go three units from the origin in the direction of the X axis. So it's teaching them that kind of vocabulary, which we definitely do in taking on the best. Okay, and here's some other examples for you. This one's just calling out the origin. And this one, again, understanding what each of the coordinates mean. So figuring out which one of those makes sense which would be from the origin, we move along the x-axis one unit to the right, which would be C, okay? All right, I think that's it for going over the standard. Let's go ahead and see what you have access to with your membership. So here we are at the website. We're going to click Members Enter here. Select Taking on the Best on the right. We'll select our grade level, which today we're working with fifth grade. The strand is in the GR strand right here. And we're scrolling down to 4.1, which is the coordinate plane. As you can see, 4.2. Was that listed? That's weird. I'm looking back at the vertical alignment. I'm surprised that in the Florida Department of Education documents that they did not place this one as a connecting benchmark because we definitely use what we learn in 4.1 to help us with 4.2. So I don't know. I did not catch that this time, but I am now. So go ahead and add this standard in as a connecting benchmark. Okay, so we are clicking GR.4.1 and right away, whether you have the bronze, silver, or gold membership, it opens up to the bronze resources right here. So this is the page with the video lessons and your student guides. So these are where your students can take notes. So you just click play, watch the video. Students will pause along the way in order to um, take their notes. And then right here on this side, we've got, you can just click right here to access your printable. For this particular one, we're doing a lot of plotting and labeling in the video lesson. You can tell it's a video lesson by that icon right there. But we've got the intro to the coordinate plane. Then we've got some coordinate practice where we um, place a point, plot and label a point, and then we describe how we traveled from the origin to plot the point, okay? So it's getting that language in there, that vocabulary. And then the last one, it's practicing with a two column table. And I'll show you what I mean by this. I mentioned before, it's like sometimes it's not a two column table. As you can see right here, we have the column for X and the column for Y. That to me is two columns, but we do have a third column right here that describes the coordinate. In the standard, it does say mention a two column chart. So I don't know, um, but there's a, a lesson on that, how to take it from the X and the Y, create your coordinate and then plot it on the graph.
So those are your bronze resources. If you have the silver or the gold plan, you click right here. You can go back to those video lessons at any time. Um, then right here, we've got some printables and then also a video lesson and your answer keys. So I'm going to click on the printables. Might take a second to load. All right, so here we go. You can tell that we've got, that we also have the bronze resources inside of this too. So we have that video lesson. And then if you keep on scrolling, then we have extra practice here. So it says label the origin, the X axis, the Y axis, go ahead and scale the axis with whole numbers and plot six, five correctly. For this, this is a video lesson where we have to plot and label the order pairs correctly, then describe how you traveled from the origin to plot each point. And here is some extra practice for you. Then we've got the other video lesson, coordinate plane practice with two column tables, even though there's three columns. Um, you saw that just a second ago, and here is the extra practice for that. So it's the same kind of thing. And then you also have a math mission right here, which is like a math task. This one says to plot and label the coordinate forward six on the coordinate plane. Which value is the X coordinate? What does it tell you to do? Which value is the Y coordinate? What does it tell you to do? And here is an error analysis right there. Okay. And then finally, you have the math misconception mystery, which is another video. You just click play right here on the silver page. This is your, um, your student's detective diary where they can also file their detective reports. But basically what you do, you click play and I walk you through the whole thing. First, your students will solve the problem on their own and then they will watch as four characters solve that same problem. Now, three of those characters are going to make a mistake and only one of them is correct. And yes, those characters are just me dressed up in silly costumes with silly accents. Um, highlighting some errors that students commonly make. It's a lot of fun, great for math discourse. A lot of teachers tend to start these as whole group lessons, and then once students start to get the feel of what's expected of them, then they start to um, roll them out as small group or independent practice. But they're really intended for group discussions, that way students can bounce ideas and thoughts back with each other. And then they'll file this detective report, stating who the most reasonable answer belongs to, and analyzing the work of the others. Okay, so that's your silver plan. You also have your answer keys right there. And if you have the gold membership, you have access to even more to everything. You can go back to those bronze video lessons at any time. You can go back to the silver printable resources with that math misconception mystery at any time. And then for the gold plan, you also have a mini assessment with a variety of question types. So here's the mini assessment for this one. Um, some teachers use it as a mini assessment. Some use it as extra practice because your county provides you with mini assessments. However you want to use it, it doesn't say mini assessment. It just says show what you know. So however you want to use this extra practice, you can. There's an answer key right here for that. Um, one of the perks of being a gold member is that you also get these videos, the breaking down the best videos where we study the standard and then we also see what resources are available in your plan and how they connect. Um, that will be right here as soon as I finish editing this video and uploading it to the site. One of the perks of being a gold member is that it is right there for you. It's ad free and it's with all the other resources. But just so you know, these videos are also on YouTube. They just contain ads. But the biggest reason that most people get the, um, the gold plan is because of McCarthy Math 155. This is a daily math intervention that's aligned to the Common Core standards. I know it says Common Core. I've created taking on the best to be strategically aligned to the best standards, but there are a lot of skills in the, this program that do trickle over and can definitely support your students to build their confidence, all right? So if we click right here, we're gonna go here to fifth grade, but McCarthy Math 155, the 155 stands for 155 videos for each grade level. So if we click on fifth grade, you can see here, these are some of the units. You see in the best standards, we are still multiplying. We are still dividing. We still have numerical expressions. There's a lot with place value and decimals and fractions. But we're going to scroll down to right here, unit 11, seven additional videos to practice the coordinate plane. Okay, it's a little bit different. But still, we're plotting points. 
just videos that you can easily share with your students and um, really build their confidence. So that's awesome. I think that's it. I hope that this video was helpful for you to break down the standard and then see what you have that's strategically aligned to this standard. Before you go, let me remind you that what you choose to do with your life every day, it really does matter. Thank you so much for showing up day after day to support your students, to showcase what your best looks like. That way you can inspire them to step into the best version of themselves too. I know that you're busy and I respect your time. So I'm going to go ahead and let you go, get back to all the things that you got to do, and I will see you next time. Bye. Okay, so I know that I just said goodbye for now, but I'm gonna ask you to do one more thing, okay? If you enjoyed this episode, please consider sharing it with your teacher friends or other leaders in education. That's how I get to continue doing what I love to do, which of course is supporting you all to the best <laughs> of my ability. All right, for real now, bye.